to have direct dialogue with the community of the city of Rochester, and can we give him a hand clap of welcome? We want to stand inside our statement that we made to the community as we make introductions and welcome, and then we will have a word of, of prayer. We want to remind all of us that this is an open dialogue of his service. It's open season for the community to explore and to discuss. And we assured him he is here to listen as well as to get direct input from the community. And that was why he is as good as his school system. So when I was invited by down the planning committee, the faith community, the Hawaiian USA, the Movement for Anti-Racist Ministry, and Action Coalition, I immediately said, said yes, because there's nothing more important than having, listening to the perspective of the parents and, and the community on how the system can get, get better. Let me begin to try to clarify some misconceptions about my role, about my role as a distinguished educator. Because I'm going around and people think, think that I am the fixer, that I am going to be able to fix the system. I am not and don't have the authority to fix things. I am here, as you know, appointed by Commissioner Elia to make an assessment, a review of the entire school district, focusing on what are the barriers that are impeding the school from delivering on its promise to ensure that all students are ready for college, career, or productive life as citizens. And in that review, my role is to look at everything, the instructional and non-instructional systems, and then issue a report with a series of recommendations and action plan that will be, are supposed to be followed by the board and the, super, and the superintendent. I also will be, after the report is issued, I will be here to assist in the implementation and also to issue quarterly reports to the commissioner and to the community as to whether those recommendation and action steps are being implemented, being, being implemented. and to, as I said, to support in the implementation and provide any assistance at, as needed. So, also I'm a non-voting board member too, and I'm embedded, I'm embedded in, in the system. So, I spend, I look, the way I have approached the work, but being embedded in the system means that I attend the meeting, I see how the system operates, I see how the board functions, I look how um, the meetings are held. Well, I go to school visit. I've been interviewing tons of people, different stakeholders, just to listen to the people here in terms of why is it that this district has been historically underperforming, which will guide my my report. But again, I don't have the authority, so I really cannot tell the board of the superintendent, you need to do this. That is not my role, it is not my place, but I do make recommendations. And I'm not waiting, I'm not waiting for my report because we're talking about the likes of about 27,000 beautiful children. So I'm, I'm going, if I see something, I mentioned to the board or the superintendent or principals, what if you try this? So I'm not just waiting for them to read my, my report. If I know that that idea or suggestion can change the trajectory that can help 
student learn how to read, be a better mathematician, be a better artist, better scientist. So I do offer that. And I do want to I do want to say that the board, the superintendent, administrators, I felt that they have embraced my feedback. And I I really feel that I the city of Rochester has been very welcoming. So I am glad I'm glad glad to be here. So that in a nutshell was the what the role of the distinguished educator is. That's why I have my back, because I'm interested in hearing from you why do you think this district has been historically underperforming and what ideas do you have on how the district can improve. And the other thing I forgot to mention was I'm not here to speak on behalf of the district. I'm not. So if you ask me questions about operational things about the district, or I can't answer them because I'm not here to as a representative of the district. Okay. President Obama put it this way: <clears throat> Good district had a plan for special education. Superintendent Rizar contacted the Council of the Great City Schools, a coalition of the nation's largest urban public school systems that at the time had conducted more than 160 instructional and operational reviews of its member districts. The council was asked to review the services provided by the Rochester City School District to its students with disabilities and make recommendations to improve services. Only four years later, in 2013, the district again requested assistance with the development of a plan for special education. And this time, Patrick Tidings provided not one, but two reports and recommendations. Four years later, in 2017, the district would again seek a plan for special education. Superintendent Barbara D. Williams commissioned Dr. Judy Elliott to review the first set of plans I had mentioned, and then to provide recommendations to improve support and systems to address the high rate of special education identification and the overall low performance of students with disabilities. Dr. Elliott would report that the district continues to accelerate the placement of students into an instructional and support system that has not demonstrated the ability to improve student performance across any important educational outcome indicators, and the district is perfectly aligned for the results it is getting. In 2018, the Board of Education created a special committee to serve as an advisory body to the board, and we now have the report and recommendations of the special advisory committee that you can read on the district's website. This is 10 years of plans. 2008 is 2018. Every four years of plan. 10 years of plans and recommendations for improvement, improvement never implemented or implemented understaffed. We must ask was it the lack of a plan? Or is it the lack of political will and power to hold the district accountable to implement the plans it already has and that taxpayers we've already paid for? Now there is, don't miss this, there is political will and power operating in Rochester right now. There is political will and power behind the forced serial displacement of black and brown communities through gentrification 
urban removal or renewal, as they say, disinvestment, etc. There is political will and power behind the rising and the exacerbation of homelessness in Rochester. There is political will and power behind <coughs> zero tolerance policies, the over suspension of children of color and children of color with disabilities. There is political will and power behind a school to prison pipeline where a young boy is arrested for holding safety scissors during an art project. The question is, where is the political will and power to counter the powers that do? Where is this collective, unified body of citizens to expose, to challenge, and to disrupt the powers that be that have operated just even just talking about the last 10 years. As long as we, the community, remain unorganized and silent, persons in power, such as Commissioner Ilya, can make unilateral decisions without consultation with parents, with community, with taxpayers, with anyone, and appoint a distinguished educator to this district to a tune of a minimum, possibly, of a quarter of a million dollars. Persons in power, as long as we remain unorganized and silent, they can underfund and take current monies from direct services for our children with parents, students, community. As long as we remain unorganized and silent, persons in power who call for evidence-based strategies can actually implement a strategy that has no evidence of being effective in improving the academic outcomes of a district. 